Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben. You know, humans are pretty resourceful. We built the Great Wall of China, the skyscrapers of Manhattan during a recession, and completed an interdimensional portal at the request of grey aliens in record time. <laughs> Aren't we capable? So I want to know, would it be possible for humans to construct a TIE fighter using the current technology available to us? A TIE fighter at its heart is basically just a one-man space capsule, although there have been two-man versions. Humans have a lot of experience at constructing this kind of space capsule, from Mercury to Gemini to Apollo to Soyuz to Shenzhou to the SpaceX Dragon. We have basically spent the last 60 years building one, two, three, and even six man space capsules with no shields, minimal life support, and thruster systems for maneuvering. Earth's space capsules are quite maneuverable, even being able to dock together or with space stations in orbit, and there are now even rockets that can land back on Earth using thrusters. So what's the feasibility with current technology? Well, I think we could work something out. I mean, it's not like it's rocket science. Oh yeah, it is actually rocket science. Anyway, let's get started. The TIE Fighter in Star Wars doesn't have a hyperdrive, so no faster than light travel is required. That's good, because we can't do that. The TIE Fighter runs on an ion engine. NASA has developed an ion thruster. The only problem is it's very slow to accelerate. It would have to run for 10,000 hours to power a spacecraft to reach enough speed to break free of Earth's orbit and reach the asteroid belt and beyond. So it'd be less like this, and more like this. This may take a while. So let's say our craft just uses present day propulsion methods fuel-powered thrusters, and solar panels for electrical power. The TIE Fighter in Star Wars does have solar panels in the wings. And let's say we'll put our fuel in the wings too, so perhaps we make them a little bit thicker to carry more fuel. But there would never be enough fuel in the wings to leave Earth's atmosphere. The space shuttle needs an entire tank of fuel bigger than the craft itself and two additional rocket boosters to get to low Earth orbit. The TIE Fighter would need the same amount of fuel in proportion to its size. So let's say we just build them in orbit. We have the technology to create pressurized capsules for small groups of people that can maneuver at speeds of up to 17,500 miles an hour in orbit of Earth. The US military has developed laser weapons that can destroy aircraft. So maybe we could fit a couple of these laser cannons to the front of the capsule. You won't see the beams. Lasers in real life are invisible under most conditions, but they'll do the job. So maybe we could develop a fighter that could take out threats in orbit, like Chinese and Russian spy satellites, for example, or intercontinental ballistic missiles. You can't always rely on Superman for that. but it wouldn't have the thrust to break away from Earth's gravity. It could only maneuver in orbit or descend into the atmosphere. TIE fighters in Star Wars do have the ability to enter a planet's atmosphere, but you encounter immense heat when hitting the air at such high speeds. So what about that big glass window on the front? Wouldn't that get melted through? Well, maybe the window on the TIE fighter isn't made of glass. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. Sorry, wrong franchise. Now, in the present day, we don't have transparent aluminum, so it would have to be made out of glass. Perhaps it would be a little bit smaller than the TIE Fighter's window, but it could still be there. The Space Shuttle had quite big windows, but it could still conduct re-entry with the windows angled away from the heat. The TIE Fighter could do the same, but it would have to cover delicate areas like the solar panels with heat shields to avoid them burning up. And that would add a layer of difficulty because heat shields are heavy. But then how would it fly within an atmosphere? The TIE Fighter doesn't have an aerodynamic design. In Star Wars, they use repulsor lift systems to push against gravity, but we don't have that. So we would need some sort of downward thruster to maintain lift, and there are such systems in development. For example, SpaceX has been developing a thruster landing system for its Dragon capsule, but they are still in the development stage and Elon Musk has abandoned the idea of using the system anytime soon, saying it's very difficult to meet the safety requirements for transporting live people. 
But the Empire doesn't care that much about its pilots. I mean, they have plenty of them. So let's say we do use a SpaceX Dragon thruster system. But these thrusters are really just for a controlled descent rather than flying around. So I'm not sure how reliable they would really be. The TIE Fighter would also be limited in range because of the amount of fuel it could carry. So it could probably just fly around for a few minutes and then conduct a controlled descent. And obviously if it ran out of fuel mid-flight, it would just drop out of the sky. So let's give it a parachute for emergency landings, just like every other Earth space capsule ever. So guys, my conclusion is that a fleet of TIE fighters constructed with present day technology would probably be limited to serving as an orbital defense force, most likely based at the International Space Station, ready to react and deal with alien threats when they arrive. But let's face it, any alien ship advanced enough to travel here from another solar system would probably be able to flatten our fleet of TIE fighters like flies. So what do you think about this, guys? Is it possible? Perhaps you know about some classified technology that I don't. Leave your comments below. Subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like. And if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.